Can you hear me? Good. Good afternoon. Apologies for starting to, ooh, that's too far. Starting a little bit late, we had a bit of microphone malfunction. At least it's not wardrobe malfunction. <laughs> yes, thanks for coming to the session. We live in a world of fast changing technologies. Our customers are sometimes facing challenges where they have to make a technology decision um, because they not necessarily always have a luxury to explore and experiment with technology. So in some cases, they actually start deprioritizing their investments in uh, the technology areas like collaboration, communications, networks, operations, security in some spaces. From the other side, our customers, their focus on the connection with their clients is actually shifting. As you've heard about all these transformational stories, their focus is shifting from uh, physical to digital and mobile. So our customers have to create new engagement frameworks on the connection with their clients, where engagement is no longer about product and service, but it is about relationship, it is about insights, it is about the innovation our customers deploy inside their organization and how their clients actually can leverage that innovation our customers are deploying. So we at Microsoft hear a lot from our customers, very common questions. Where do we start? How do we deploy this technology? What is our best architecture? This is a huge opportunities and huge challenges. And we see that simplicity and speed are really key for success here. So hopefully after today's session, you will start your journey to Cloud PBX uh, with Enterprise Voice, and hopefully you will have a good understanding on how to plan your UC rollout, which is really, really right for your organization. Hopefully we'll demystify a lot of questions and myths you currently have. So, my name is Vachtang Asatrian. For those who don't know me, I'm based in Australia, out at West Island. So I'm part of the global team. I look after APEC and I come down a lot. I do a lot of business with our uh, customers in New Zealand and partners. So the agenda for today will look like, oh, okay, we'll talk about cloud, we'll talk about identity, we'll talk about authentication, uh, we'll touch some of the deployment choices you currently use, 2013, Sky for Business, Sky for Business Online, uh, and we'll try to talk, cover as much as we can the cloud PBX with PST and calling, right? But before we start, I really would like to bring your attention that your feedback is very, very important for us. So we received, last year I was presenting here on uh, some of the sessions and we received very good feedback. It gave us a good guidance on information. You really would like to hear it because we do these sessions for you guys to share information. So please provide feedback, give us evaluation so we can actually adjust information, make sure we bring the relevant content for you guys. So let's start. Before we go, can you, Put up your hand in case if you are using Sky for Business today, in any form, online or on-premise. Great, cool, I, I can finish it and go, you know. <laughs> Most of you already using. Any 2010 users? OCS, you see how we advanced we are? I've got one of our engineers, uh, senior engineers from Redmond is here. He's kind of delivering great message to him. We are on the Sky for Business, we are forefront. Now, raise your hand if you're running Sky for Business online. That's pretty good, thank you very much. It gives me a bit of guidance now what, what, what's happening with you guys. So as you've learned, no matter which online solution you choose to deploy or use whatever online application, would it be Microsoft Services Azure, would it be uh, SharePoint, Exchange Online, would it be Facebook, would it be Amazon Web Services, would it be Salesforce, no matter anything you use online, before you dig into the architecture, interop, and all the bits and pieces, you need to address those three simple elements. You need to understand which cloud I'm connecting to, you need to address your identity, and you need to basically fix, address your authentication methodologies. This is the foundation. If you define this, then you can go and bring the applications. So, there are two cloud models we deploy. You see, I'm, I'm gonna be keep confusing you guys, but this is kind of a test for feeling do you really understand. These are two models. There's a public cloud offering that you can consume Sky for Business Online from the Microsoft Cloud, public cloud, the closest data center we've got is in Australia. Or we can deploy Sky for Business uh, within your organization. We call it on-premise. Now, 
I'm a little bit cautious about calling it on-premise because on-premise now, it can be on-premise anyway. It's a server deployment. It can be inside your data center or under the desk on the server. That is a private cloud for customer, or it can be deployed within a service provider as a server deployment. So there's a two flavors. You need to decide which actually path I'm going together. And as a Microsoft, we give you choice to connect them together in a hybrid configuration. We'll dig a little bit deeper into these options. When we're using the cloud applications, and this is very, very strictly applicable to the cloud apps, it is very important to let applications aware who you are as a user. You, the cloud needs to know your identity. So whenever you sign up for Office 365, we provision your tenant, you decide the region for the data center where your tenant is gonna be living, and we provision you with Azure Active Directory. Anyone have heard about Azure Active Directory? Okay, good, thank you. So we provision you with Azure Active Directory tenant. You want it or don't want it, we do it. Why we do it? Because later, when you start consuming services like Exchange Online, SharePoint Online, Sky for Business Online, the applications need to be aware who you are, and this is where the identity piece come into place. So there are three ways you can consume and synchronize your identity. One, it's a pure cloud identity model, basically. That's the first option. You may have Active Directory on-premise, or you may not have Active Directory on-premise. If you have Active Directory on-premise, you may choose actually not to synchronize identities. Which means you want to keep your IT pe people busy, they will go online, they will create all users online, they'll have your domain online, and that's where your identity will live. And you will keep your passwords also online in that case, separate passwords. So whenever I try to log in and authenticate and identify the online applications that I'm a Vachtang application will be fully aware of me. That's a cloud identity model. Next model is a synchronized identity. It is in the middle. Basically, this is the model where you will say, I have got on-premise Active Directory and I would like consistency of information. I don't want to have my IT people create user on-premise, then go into PowerShell, create user online. No. Whenever I create user on-premise, this that data about user will be synchronized, actually will be put into online system, will be created. And I can also synchronize the passwords in that case. We synchronize password hashes in those cases. And when you will try to sign in, for example, to Sky for Business Online application, the cloud will fully be aware who you are because it knows your identity and will have your passwords. It can actually authenticate you. But it doesn't give you that kind of single sign-on experience. That's the synchronized identity model. And the final one, in case if you would like to use single sign-on experience, or if you're concerned of syncing your password hashes across internet, or in case if you're providing the third-party token authentication, whatever, smart cards and all these capabilities which requires you to come on premise, we use the third model, which is the federated identity, which means you need to synchronize identities into the cloud, but whenever users log into applications, the applications will say, actually, I'm not aware how to authenticate you, but I know who can. And authentic then authentication will redirect you back to on-premise, and your on-premise, whatever environment you have, will authenticate you. That's a federated identity. There are no right or wrong choices. You really need to evaluate your current environment. You need to evaluate your compliance requirements. Some customers come and tell us we cannot synchronize the data across public internet. There's a variety of requirements can be there, but you need to consider one of these options if you are willing to deploy and consume online services. So, once we address that, we have online, we have identity, we know how we're authenticating, let's have a look at the deployment options. Again, this is one of the confusion slides we really like to do. There are two choices to deployment. Two. You can either go into the Sky for Business Online, which means you have a tenant, you have got there in the tenant your Sky for Business Online and you will start consuming that as a service. Or you can consume and deploy Sky for Business as a server. And that server can live, as I stated, in your private cloud, on-premise, your data center, within your network, or is outsourced, someone like a Spark as a hosted service, and you're using that. These are the two options only you can deploy. There is no third option. Third one, hybrid, is a configuration. It is when you basically connect those together and saying, I would like to, there are some benefits. I'd like to connect my own premise and online because I have a need in that, and you can start using third ways of configuration. And we'll have a look through these options. So last year, I've done a very, very detailed 
uh, review of the Sky for Business server and it's on premise with all the options. What I'll do, I'll just breeze through very quickly in case if you would like to go back the recordings on channel nine available. So basically Sky for Business server, you've got your Active Directory, single forest, you build your server infrastructure, your edge infrastructure, and then you have got your clients inside and outside as now I can call it a bread and butter. It is business as usual, we know how to deploy. There are variations, there are possibilities, okay? Next option, in case if you are deploying it in the resource forest. Why I would deploy into resource forest? Again, th there is no kind of very common specific requirements to deploy in a resource forest. It could be I'm buying a companies. Every month I buy one more company and you're now buying a companies as a different IT systems, disintegrated, they've got their forest, I've got my forest, but it should not stop you to start provisioning people with the services, right, if you've got. So you can provision the companies that are actually in a different forest with Sky for Business capabilities and that's supported. That resource forest model also, can you see guys' colors? Oh, it's playing a little bit. Resource forest works also with the service provider and this is the case where, in the case of Spark, you basically say, I've got all my users inside my environment but I don't want to host and I don't want to do anything with Sky for Business. This way the service provider will, they'll build a Sky for Business server, they build Active Directory, they'll build anything they need and you're just consuming it as a service. So resource forest deployment is one of the deployment methods that is available, that is supported. And the final one in the relationship to the service provider, you can extend your Active Directory into service provider. And we're seeing this option and more and more uptake more and more organizations extending Active Directory into service provider because this has a lot of benefits when it comes to hybrid, when it comes to the connection with online services. I'll touch those. So as you can see, there are a variety of the implementations, variety of the choices, right? Sky for Business Online. It is online, multi-tenanted platform. We don't have many dedicated, so it's the only option for you to consider. You've got Office 365 services, if you are on one of the e-licenses, E1, E3, E5, uh, Secure, Enterprise, E5, whatever license you have, you have Sky for Business Online provisioned into the geographic data center, which means in your case, if you have selected Australia, my data center, that's where the Sky for Business Online is going to run. If you selected Singapore data center, that's where the Sky for Business Online is going to run. It doesn't have certain capabilities like quality of service and call admission control, it's a kind of no, but based on my experience, it's more philosophical conversation. It is, sits on the internet. You really need to think how my data is going to get into internet and which paths really I need to apply quality of service on those elements. Um, it supports a variety of complexity, the topologies, multiple SIP domains. You can go to resource forest, multiple forest. All these variations are possible. We can look into every case by case basis. It's practically, I haven't seen, I work with a lot of customers in Asia. In seven years, I haven't seen any case where I would say, your environment is so complex, you cannot uh, support various capabilities. We've been brought resource forest models and various capabilities, so we, we worked through those and provided customers with the services. It's pretty simple. Remember, everything to do with Sky for Business Online, it's a service that actually coming from the cloud, Again, every time you touch the cloud, the first thing you need to think, it's a public cloud, I need to address my identity, I need to address my authentication. Once it is done, then I'm consuming completely service coming out of the cloud. I had a case where I walked into a customer, we're talking about Sky for Business Cloud, what about your identity? That project starts in six months. Guess what? I'll come back in six months. Because if there is no identity in the cloud, there's not really much benefit for you firing up service in the cloud, right? You need to go back to this identity conversations. So, what is a hybrid? Hybrid is not a product. Hybrid is a very specific configuration. Remember, I stated there are two ways you can deploy. Either server in some of the premises, hosted by a service provider or hosted by you as a customer, and online. So, what it means doing a hybrid? It's first of all, you're splitting your domain. We call it split domain. We no longer call it split domain. It's a hybrid configuration, which means your SIP domain that's available online now become available uh, for on-premise. It's consistently. Users can be located on one platform or another. You, you had to do literally five or seven uh, PowerShell com configuration commands to let each environment to know about each other and let them actually understand they are in a hybrid mode. 
And you as an administrator can move user from online to hybrid, to, from online to on-premise, from on-premise to online, depending on the, what actually you would like to achieve. That's the hybrid configuration. Again, a variety of configurations are supported. And let's have a look through some of those. If it's a single forest, again, anyone's running hybrid. Okay, cool. So it's, it's pretty simple, single forest. You've got your full-blown Sky for Business server deployment with Edge. You've got online environment. Buy a pack of beer to the IT guys, seven command. 15 minutes later, you've got in a hybrid. You are in a hybrid. You can move users in and out. That is as easy as it is because it's not a topology. It's a configuration. What you see with the service providers, and this is a very typical question I've seen coming up more and more for past probably four to five months, where service provider hosts all my Sky for Business. I don't have anything. I consume it as a service. This is the ideal configuration for you to go into hybrid which means you have extended your Active Directory into service provider. That's what you want to do. That is the best configuration because as far as the Microsoft's concerned, we don't really differentiate you being a service provider or on-premise. For us, you are who you are. That you're just coming from a different IP ranges. That is supported. Now there's no conflicts. It's fully supported. And um, in case if you're stuck in the resource forest, we have made some announcements that we would support probably six months ago. It was funny, I've, I was speaking last year on Ignite and I was stating out of the stage, hybrid is not supported. I, we finished Ignite, too late, too, literally two weeks later, we've made an announcement that actually we tested some config, we made it working, right? So we will support very specific configuration. Again, it's not a product support. What Microsoft stated said, if you are in a hybrid in the resource forest, and if you configure your system to be in these components sitting in this environment, and there are some obstacles, and there are some issues where if you have a Sky for Business deployed server within service provider, then your exchange on-premise, if you have on-premise, have to be with service provider. And then you have to bring very specific way, the way you synchronize your identity. It's a complexity involved. But again, if you have that, please have a chat with us. We'll be able to help you to navigate through that. It is supported you can get to the position. But as you can see, this is much, much cleaner solution when you go into the extending your Active Directory into service provider. And we've seen a lot of customers, they really don't afraid of extending Active Directory. You don't really sharing it with the rest of it. Service provider usually will build just this isolated environment for you. You're just gonna have portions of your infrastructure within their environment. Okay, so that's, if you are in service provider, that's much better preferred option when you integrate into the hybrid. And a lot of customers will have and say, why do I need to go hybrid? Tell me the features I can get in a hybrid. Hybrid, we believe, is, it should be your starting architecture today. As you know, Microsoft stated a number of times, we are investing a lot in the cloud. We're bringing, first of all, availability of the certain features and services into cloud. It's not the fact that server becomes second class citizen. No, server is still first class citizen for us. But you can see features and functionalities like Microsoft PST and conferencing, multi-regional support, meeting broadcast. All these services, they are originating straight off the cloud. So in order to use the power of the cloud applications, you need to be in hybrid mode. And remember, Microsoft does not give you technical ultimatum saying, you have to bring all the workloads to the cloud to utilize the power of the cloud. No. Bring the workloads to the cloud whenever you are comfortable with. That is a statement. So hybrid today should be the foundational of any architecture going forward. You need to be in hybrid mode. Please, and if you have got Sky for Business deployment, think about it. it you are literally about six commands away, six, literally six commands away from being in a hybrid. So. What is the best option? As uh, a lot of us you, the customers ask, is it on-premise survey, I'm going completely online or hybrid? And I worked with a lot of customers and each of them had their ways and reasons to stay either on-premise or go to online or stay in a hybrid. But what I found, there is uh, two things that actually united all my customers I worked with. These two things really what they started working when they started thinking about Sky for Business. We are technical people. We like to get into technology certificates and servers and IPs, firewalls. We love this stuff, but we have to park this. Park this at least for a while until we go back and start thinking about user profiles 
and we start thinking about the workload capabilities. We need to have a very good understanding. If you are replacing IP phone from vendor A to another IP phone or vendor B, what is the maximum impact to user? The brand and color of the phone, maybe different buttons. That is the maximum impact. If I'm replacing IP phone A with a client, with a soft UC solution, now users suddenly have this way of communication. I can do IM, I can do um, sharing, I can do conferencing, I can do video, it's a federated contact. There's a bunch of ways I can communicate. So no longer it is uh, clear to define your desktop user or your mobile user. Inside the desktop users, we consume technology differently. I travel a lot across Asia. I never do video because the networks I'm coming from versus someone who travels in New Zealand, Australia, who can actually be on a good network, who can do video. Networks are really not good in Southeast Asia. So this is what we call it in Microsoft personas and usage profiles. Have you guys heard about personas? Anyone has heard? Great, please go and explore. You need to know those personas because your user base will consume technology in a completely different way. What we found, it is an average six to eight user profiles types, persona types in the organization will have. And there are a number of consulting companies actually, or even Microsoft Consulting Services, we can have enterprise architects come and work with you to basically identify the number of personas, and then you can say, okay, this is how I'm gonna consume technology. Why it is important for you? Because first of all, users gonna be using technology. Secondly, touching a technical side, those users gonna get those services and they're gonna hammer your network, your uplinks, your internet, your storage, your server, everything is gonna be hammered. You wanna be, in control on what's coming into your networks. So you need to do that persona stuff. That's very, very important. And the goal is really to take a persona and map persona to the right technology capability. And now we hear a lot, we're saying, we're all excited in Microsoft about Cloud PBX. Yes, I am genuinely excited about it. But at the same time, I'm saying Cloud PBX is not for every user. Cloud PBX is right for a very specific user set today. Of course, we're bringing more functionality, it's gonna grow, but today, I can't very heavy telephony user can't put them into the cloud PBX because with certain things we don't do, right? So you need to know your persona definitions and write those users to the right solutions. How many times we've seen in the Sky for Business deployment, even on premise where we, our customers tell us, leave my call center people alone, don't touch them. This is the case, this is nothing to do with online, this is to do even with the server. So you need to know the personas. And secondly, you need to understand, I'm, I'm rushing, you need to understand what are the capabilities of product. We have absolutely, and I can genuinely tell you, we absolutely committed, this is our aspiration to get the parity on the functionality between on-premise and online to the same level. That is our aspiration, that's the goal, that's where we're going to. We're pulling a lot of energy and development and resources to get, in a Nirvana world, in a complete sense, I move you online, you wouldn't even notice it, all the functions available, but today they are not. The fact is if you do XMPP Federation, anyone does XMPP Federation, it's great. I, I've seen only one customer in two years who said I wanna do it. You have to be on premise, and then you need to think of actually online users cannot recognize XMPP Federation, which is on premise. For example, uh, PSTM conferencing that Microsoft provides, you cannot take your local trunks because you have them cheap rates and bring those trunks as DALI numbers into online meetings. Because if you are using online conferencing, your meetings gonna be either Microsoft PSTN services which are available in New Zealand or they have to be through the audio conferencing provider. And at the same time, how many times I've heard Cloud PBX is not ready, I cannot call yes. I cannot consume Microsoft DALI numbers in Australia and New Zealand but I can bring my telephone numbers into, the, into that service. And how many customers we have, even if I give you right now PSTN calling in New Zealand, you may come back and say, oh, sorry, we sign up four year contract with uh, Vodafone to provide us SIP trunks, I cannot port the numbers to you. So it's not just the product readiness, right? You need to look into yourself as a customer and say, am I ready to start consuming and moving things around, right? That is very critical. So, so you need to understand the capability and you need to map the right solution to the right user. So modern voice, yes, Cloud PBX is ready. It has a lot of functionality. It can streamline 
and it can simplify your operation. But it's a different way of running it. It's a lot of cases we hear you don't support this function or you don't support this function, you do things differently. Yes, we do that. But imagine, would it be fair if you had a function on, on premise, I take the function away and just throw a lot of resources, code it, and give you the same function online? What has changed? What is the difference between me giving you software as a service versus a hoster who actually can host this and give you as a user as a service as a paid per user endpoint? Then there's no difference between us. So every time when we bring the functionality, we have to think, if I take a function and move it into the cloud, how it's gonna look like? It may not always look like the way it should be looking for on-premise, right? So you need to think about that. That's why it's important to take a user when you bring into cloud, make sure you bring the right user and make sure think how users are gonna be consuming those services. So there are two core parts when we're talking about cloud PBX. The call control part, everything is done in the cloud. This is a cloud application. It is a software as a service. It is updated practically every three months. You know, it is a cloud software as a service. And tenant administration, definitely. That's again, you as an admin, you will be connecting to the tenant. And of course, you've got two choices. You either connect via control panel or you connect via PowerShell. And more and more we're seeing uptakes in the PowerShell connection. Anyone connects to their tenant via PowerShell? Okay, cool. Hopefully next year there'll be twice as hands <laughs> as, as I see now. Definitely. PowerShell is the way to go. We see a lot of actually interest in the PowerShell. So what type of clients I can connect? I can connect rich clients, which is my Sky for Business desktop clients. I can connect my mobile clients. All of them are working. I can connect IP phones. Some of them already certified. Some of them on the way to the certification. Some new voicemail functionality we're bringing you. We've heard a lot from you that exchange UM setting up, what was that the script I had to run? What is my rule? We've heard you. We made it much, much easier for you to provision and get voicemail going. But certain things we do not support. Things like VDI plugin, link console, pin-based authentication, but there is an asterisk there because, well, this something might be coming. It is on the roadmap, I'll show you. This is probably the first time in so many years I'm gonna be showing you roadmap. Of course, I have to put a lot of conditions, it is recorded. So <laughs> let's have a look at the slide when it comes. So what is a voicemail? Cloud voicemail is a service that's come from Microsoft. Whenever you enable user for cloud PBX, he's automatically enabled by for voicemail by our system. You don't need to do anything. You don't need to go a ticker box or run ticker box, no. It is enabled by default. It supports a bunch of languages and the most important thing, it supports Exchange Online or it supports Exchange On-Premise. We made it working literally. A uh, month ago, we brought actually Exchange on-premise support for voicemail functionality. So administrator, as I stated, we are seeing a lot of interest in the PowerShell. Now you can batch program, you can upload users, you can even in US, but I mean because when I'm saying in US, because the service is available, you can go to the PowerShell request uh, system to go and find you, get you the new telephone number, acquire the number, and assign number to the user. You can do everything scripted and operational without even touching a control panel. That's as easy as it is. Of course, you need to write and batch and test. Of course, this writing involves, but once you've created that process, you no need to uh, basically reinvent the wheel. Let's get into the interesting bits. Features and functionalities are there. And again, is this more enough? I don't know, you tell me. This is what I'm saying. You can't just bring any user and say they will use it. Users are different. I've got customers in Southeast Asia where they are absolutely hammering on a feature because that's the way they are operated. That's the way their business processes are running. I've got customers in um, Singapore area where they're absolutely demanding me to give them this mobility and this functionality is good for them. So it's, it's, it's really, you need to only judge this by looking at usage patterns because once you look at the user profile and once you say this is my mobile user and mobile user is always traveling outside on the different networks on different devices I don't know where he is but he needs comms I can deliver you do I need him let me give you this concept do you need team calling for mobile user who is on the mobile always he never comes to the office or group pickup do you need functionality for him no but you cannot 
judge the whole system and say, you're not supporting group pickup today if I'm not going to come to cloud TABX. No, you need to look at these functions based on the user profiles and usages. That is very key. Some things, there's a couple of things I want to bring your attention. Functionality, which we are going to go bring into preview. This is end of October. It's the kind of end of October. <laughs> it's going to come. Skypepreview.com, please sign up. We're no longer having this super duper secret tap on connection. You need to now Microsoft do it. So you send him email. He puts you on a special program. We kind of, no, we, everything we're going into the preview, you have to be part of the skypepreview.com. Anyone can sign into that. As long as you sign into the Skype preview and as long as you sign NDA, and then when you see the programs available for preview, you can enroll into different programs. And when a program is available, we can give you. It's not the fact we tell you when program is available on the day only. No, we will tell you through the skypepreview.com well ahead when program becomes available. We publish it, our customers express their interest and when is the time to lend them into preview, we actually start signing up for them for preview. Mac client, the plan was to lend around 8,000 preview clients. We ended up running around 22,000 because there was an interest. Again, you cannot have 22,000 secretly having connections with Microsoft to jump on a top. No, skypepreview.com, that's the place you need to start to look what it is coming. So the co-queuing and routing and organizational auto and these are the services they're gonna be landing into Preview, and we're planning to make those services available, this is a Microsoft terms, by end of the year. By end of this calendar year, we're planning to bring them. Again, they will come into the cloud into Sky for Business Online. What is the automated attendant on call routing? It, it, it's practically the response group replacement. What we've seen a lot, this was kind of the barriers for a lot of our customers to actually jump and start using technology. We're giving this functionality. But again, you need to look at these functions from the user perspective. If my mobile workforce is there, do I really need them to automated attendant? Why I have to wait five months and my people are suffering on the road, I'm not making them productive until I bring the functionality. I can identify, and I bet you, I can identify at least 10% of your user base that can lend today with functionality where they are. Tell me if you don't have any mobile users. Tell me if they're not outside of the office roaming, working from different networks. That's where we are. 10 to 15% of our users are outside. I've got mining companies who are bringing the contractors into their business, and by the whole life cycle of them working in a company, they never even cross the doors of their company because they never come to the office. They are a good start for this kind of solution. So don't wait until the full, is there, full list of features there. Identify your usage profiles and make sure you land right users into that. I'm gonna be keep repeating, I'm a little bit paranoid, about, but sorry guys. So this is, I have to record tons of in, kind of conditions. This is the first time we're showing NDA officially, publicly. Some functionality always available. This is kind of, it's planned to land by the end of this calendar year. And there is an aspirational target uh, to deliver functionality. We're kind of showing you what we are working on, what kind of functionality. Again, of course, list is much bigger. We're just giving you the sneak peek, more or less likely those features will go will land into this kind of time frames in calendar year. That's, that's where we're going. Again, it's an aspirational target for calendar year 2017. Uh, second half 2016, it's more than likely we'll get. We'll get hand groups, auto attendant, common area phones. We're doing a lot of work. Have you seen uh, the Jamie was doing, Jamie Stark on Ignite was doing this demonstration with the phones. So there's a uh, Polycom coming up with this new UI interface for the phones. All this kind of, uh, it's more than likely we'll get. An extension darling, we've heard so many times everyone asking, I need extension darling. And if you're deploying non-Sky for Business deployment, if you're doing a cloud connector, extension dialing is a bit of, yeah, it's not an easy thing to configure. So we're hearing a lot, we're bringing this functionality. So, Cloud PBX wouldn't be called Cloud PBX if we wouldn't connect it to PSTN. There's uh, two options to connect. I always have two, I don't know why. This number two is following me. So the two ways to connect to PSTN. If you are located in US, Puerto Rico, UK, 
You can consume services from Microsoft and absolutely there are benefits. You go into a portal, you want a number, you get a number, request, get number assigned to user gone. It usually takes around 10 minutes to get a number assigned to user. Try to ask your carrier to do that. Week, couple of weeks roughly it will take by the time you provision a number. But how do we do in our part of the world where the services are not available? We can take your, uh, as we call it, on-premise PSTN services and assign to your online users. That is available. Actually, it's been available since March 2016, March of this year. It's been available, it's been there, up and running. We've been speaking to a lot of customers about that. Um, but again, it's not just technology, remember. Even in the US, you might have a situation where we actually, Microsoft, we sign up with our provider for the next five years for trunks a year ago. So we can't just port numbers because we are in a contract. In, us, in order for us to port numbers from the company currently provides PSTN services to our numbers, we have to break our contracts in a certain geography. So it's not that easy for you always to break a contract. So you, it's, it's well beyond technology. You need to look at the bigger end-to-end -end picture. So in case if you decided to bring PSTN calling, because PSTN calling I found was that small kind of that final tick was really um, was stopping customers to go into online because uh, yeah, I can give you, okay, you can do the meetings and maybe I you know, need to have a PSTN dialing in the meetings, but you know, you have got this client and you've got mobile and to do the calls, you have to use mobile, but to do internal, it's always on the client. We made it available, it is available. You can make it, bring mobile users, give them a telephone number and provide them. Now, this can be delivered via Skype for Business Server if it is deployed on premise or in your provider premise, or uh, you, if you are willing not to deploy anything, you can go into, as we call it, Cloud Connector. Has anyone been experimenting with Cloud Connector before? Okay, the two brave guys. Okay, cool, yeah, th there is an option and we see a lot of interest coming in that area. Let's have a look at the architecture. No difference, this is one of the requirements for you to be in a hybrid. In case if you are running your Sky for Business full on-premise deployment, you will establish hybrid with Sky for Business online environment. You will create your policies, you will have class of service, and you move some users online. Again, you've got 10,000 users, you can say those 500 people, they're always on the road, they fit perfect my profile to be online. I move them online and then I can assign them a telephone number, which means my Sky for Business online users, they still will register to online environment, but whenever they place a telephone call, Skype for Business server are gonna be responsible for call routing. There's a voice policy and there is a voice routing policy. There's a voice routes and voice routing policy. So voice routing policy will be responsible for online users to placing a telephone call. So you can you reuse some of the existing class of services you have. You can preserve all these digits manipulation. All the services are there. Because Sky for Business server makes a decision to basically route calls. It's available and media will stay on premise. Well, it probably won't go to the voice gateway. It's more than likely gonna go into uh, mediation server, okay? The only media will go into online if the user does conferencing, right? The only time you go into online for Skype for Business if you do conferencing, voice conferencing, video conferencing, it's everything goes online. That's the only case when the media goes online. Some prerequisites, if you link 2013 or Skype for Business, that's the time you can deploy it. This with 2013, I believe you need to be, there is a March, cumulative update which will allow you actually to go and create all this environment. If you link 2010 user, it is time to start moving and thinking what you're doing. And if you're in an OCS user, I've got a couple of OCS customers, very large, you're even in a much bigger pain because we're about to stop support for a product. Okay, so yes, please try, uh, experiment. You more than likely have some kind of trunks there or gateway, you've got existing PBX. You, if you have a trunks, establish, move user, try to see how his dynamics changes, right? You really, you're not gonna make his condition worse than where he is. You're just gonna empower him, you're gonna give him more functionality. 
please use it. And in case if you are not willing to deploy any of the Sky for Business infrastructure, nothing, absolutely nothing. I don't want it. I don't want it to provide nothing. I just want to use pure cloud services. There are customers who would like. I'm working on a number of those. You can deploy, as we call it, Cloud Connector Edition. What is a Cloud Connector Edition? It is basically the small presence of the cloud on site your network. Basically, Cloud Connector Edition runs, it's a combination of four virtual machines. So the main controller, Edge, Mediation Server, and the CMS box. Those virtual machines, they will run on a Hyper-V server, needs to be dedicated Hyper-V server, all provisioned through the scripts. Scripts will go and drag the virtual machines. And what we are doing now, we even actually, through the cloud, we actually pushing updates to those virtual machines. Again, you can choose it and say, no, I want to update them locally. But you can even come to the point where we, we are pushing updates to virtual machines. And the aspiration, it's a kind of come to the point of, what is an Xbox? When last time did you guys update the Xbox? It nows, when is the right time? It needs to go get the right stuff, it updates, reboots, and gives you an op option of the new software running it. So the aspiration is actually come to that level. So we are also working with our partners, Sonus and Audio Codes, where they actually embed that functionality into one of their modules, network modules that's run on the gateway and run those virtual four machines, right? So what will happen through this environment, you will interconnect to your voice gateway or will interconnect to IPPBX if it is supported. If it's a Skype for Business um, direct SIP trunk supported PBX, Cloud Connector can work with that. If it is a call manager certain release or a via certain release that actually we support direct SIP with Skype for Business service, we will support direct SIP with this. Right? You don't always have to go and deploy gateway. So through this local gateway, you can break out through the voice network. You can connect with the PBX and have people, because no one just cuts and bring users across from one or into another, unless you are sub 500 users, right? The bigger user base, then you have to kind of be in a coexistence mode. So what will happen, you will coexist for a certain period of time, but the most important thing is to remember, all signaling and control now in this case done in the cloud. So Sky for Business Online is responsible for your cloud control signaling as it is, and Cloud PBX will give you all the call logic and call clearance, all these elements. It is, that's, that's the case. Again, if you're gonna be deploying this variety of the elements need to be kind of applicable, can my client always talk? Because if client cannot connect to internet, you do not have any connection. Can my, this environment have connection to my uh, Sky for Business Online environment, right? It can be high availability. All these options are available for you. And it is available today. Some prerequisites you need to look into the capacity, dependent on the capacity, we recommend you to um, have a different server specs. And this is mostly probably related to the fact is we do not do today media bypass. That's the reason I've gone flow of from the client to mediation server back to the gateway. We do not do today media bypass, but we are working to bring this kind of functionality. We will bring eventually the functionality where only signaling gonna go between the mediation server and client, and client will go directly to the gateway with the best option if I'm on the same subnet or on, I'm on the same side. If, the, if this client is across wider network, then there's no point of me doing G711 call to the gateway, right? I better go to mediation server as a compressed call and mediation server places G711 call. So, to summarize, you need to think which cloud options you're going to take. You need to think if it's an online, what is my option? If it is an on-premise, it is a provider. What is the deployment option? Do I go resource model with the provider? Do I extend my Active Directory? You need to think about what is my user base? How do I use? Start from that. Think about my personas. Think about how this technology is going to be consumed by your users. Think about what are the right capabilities. Map those capabilities to your users and lend the right people into the right technology elements. Hybrid should be your foundation. No matter what you do today, you have to be in a hybrid. It is only benefits come for that because we are the only company that do not technically penalize you being on premise. We give you option to utilize online services while you are on premise. 
for to do that, you need to be in a hybrid configuration. And the best thing, try. Cloud PBX is there, functionality is there. Try, you can get a trial license assigned to your tenant, start using. Get your online services, get your on-premise PSTN lines or connections to your PBXs. Identify those users actually who can be sitting in an online environment, move them, give them a telephone number and start measuring an impact, what kind of impact they have. So while you are today here, we will have this week great sessions related to Sky for Business. So we've got troubleshooting session that Jason will be running for you guys. A very, very experienced engineer from Redmond, he's visiting us. We've got uh, Jeff Shirts running the video interrupt session. We've got migration, Keith is gonna be talking about them. And we've got Paul basically talking about the hybrid and wh what you do with the multiple seed domains. And on that point, don't forget quiz evaluation. Give us your feedback. Tell us what other topics you would like us to cover. And thank you very much for uh, your attention. I'll open up for questions. Any questions? Yes. We do. We do for local PSTN across everywhere. We're working to bring this native capability, but as you can understand, there's a lot of requirements we need to meet. If we're taking local PSTN as a Microsoft service, there's a lot of regulatory requirements forcing us to uh, go and comply, and in some cases register as a telco. Uh, the question is when local PSTN is coming to New Zealand, eventually will come. I can't give you any deadline, unfortunately. It is, again, it's part of the expansion. We've, we're working with the different countries. You'll hear soon, it's coming to a couple of more European countries. I believe on, in Atlanta on Ignite, we've made announcements, but uh, it's, uh, it's eventually come. But my point is for you, don't wait that local PSTN. Start using today, identify how users are working, make sure you've got the right users that are actually good for PBX. Move them, as a lot of service providers actually give you the completely hosted cloud, uh, fully integrated hybrid solution. Thank you. Yes. Hi there. Uh, we basically are using Skype for um, Skype Manager at the moment for a lot of our old um, legacy sort of users in that, and we're trying to figure out: is there a way you can migrate those contact lists of those users in Skype Manager over to Skype for Business? Because we've been trying to find a way to do it, and it's just not there at the moment. The question is: uh, if you ca how can you migrate uh, your Skype consumer users? into Sky for Business users. Yeah. I don't know, to my knowledge, that there are any applications. It's either gonna be probably third party providers who would write applications to migrate them across. Yeah, because they, they've removed a whole lot of functionality out of Skype Manager yeah. and didn't give us anything back. So it's just being a big, big mess and a big shambles for us to try and deal with this migration. Mm. And it's not really instilling a lot of confidence in the product inside our organization. On which product? Skype or Skype for Business? Either. Either. Yeah, it's just they're both poisoning each other. So. They, they, they're a little bit different, they have a little bit different philosophy behind. If you're having a little bit hard time with Skype consumer, is it really mean I'm gonna be hard, having a hard time with the Skype for Business server? They've got different criteria and different philosophy behind. Look, c come and have a chat with us uh, offline. We can take it back. No, th this natively, we keep them away from each other. Thank you. Any other questions? Great, looks like I've done my job well. No questions. Thank you very much.